Hi and welcome to the We Are Zion Sermon Podcast. We are a local church based here in Chennai, India. We are so glad you are here and our hope is that this will encourage, inspire and instill fresh faith in you. We continue our sermon series titled Planted. Christine Gershom shares with us what it looks like to be rooted in Christ just like that tree planted by streams of water. Will you quiet in your heart to hear God's word and to examine your rootedness through the eyes of Jesus? Hi church, it's such a joy to bring God's word to you today. As you know, we've been doing a new series called Planted and it's based out of Jeremiah chapter 17. And let's just read that verse one more time just to kind of uh, get a grip on what we're looking at. Jeremiah 17 verses 7 to 8 in the ESV version says this, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. This week we are looking specifically at the roots and this is what it says, He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream. So um, the botanist in me has to tell you this, that the key to a fruitful plant are healthy roots. And the uh, pastor in me says the key to a fruitful life are healthy roots as well. We all have roots. There's this joke that my father used to say that, you know, money is the root cause of all evil, but man needs roots. And isn't that the truth? We all have roots. Even if we don't know what they are, we go on a quest at some point in our life to discover our roots, to find out where we came from, what our ancestry is like, who our ancestors were, what the past looked like. Because on some level, we feel like the past will help us in our present and in the future. And so roots are so important to all of us. Uh, I've heard a lot of people saying, you know, those who live abroad, they say, you know, I'm coming back to India to discover my roots. And while that is great, that it's an essential part of all our lives. Today, we're going to be discussing what the roots look like for each of us as followers of Christ. And I want to ask you this before we start. If you were to identify your roots in Jesus, can you confidently say, you know what, my roots have gone out. They touch the living water and he is all I need. He's all I have. He's all I depend on. Is that you? Or have you said, I think I missed the mark. I have allowed my roots to grow, but they haven't exactly touched the living waters. They've gone to a bunch of different things. And today I want us to look at ourselves, not out of guilt, not out of condemnation, but to look at ourselves closely and say, Lord, where are these roots gone? Are the roots planted in the right place? Have the roots touched you, the source of living water? Or have the roots gone awry? Have they gone all over the place? There's a show in the U.S. Um, where they actually find the roots for different people. They, they do genetic testing. They do genealogy tests. They have genealogists working on it. And they trace people's ancestry based on public records and, you know, other things. And so I was watching a couple of these episodes just to get a hang of what it's like to discover your roots. And it was amazing to watch people gush over, you know, who their ancestors were and a couple of the things that they... Uh, accomplished. But all of us know that none of our ancestries are so illustrious. There are there are parts of our ancestries which are a bit messy. Because let's face it, we're human. We have fallen. We are normal human beings. We have brokenness in our lives. And so if we were to look back, like we so often do, what are we going to find there in our physical roots? What are we going to find in our familial roots? Are those things that we're proud about? Are those things that we would talk about to the world or are there some parts that we would rather have hidden? Because like I said, roots are so important. But today as followers of Jesus, I want us to look at a different kind of root, something new for us to think about. If a seed, like we heard last week about the seed, if the seed is the origin of life, I believe that the roots are the beginning of proof of life. If the seed has actually imbibed water, if it has actually absorbed water, the first thing that it starts to release are the roots. And so each of us, as followers of Jesus, once we've allowed the living water to enter our lives, the thing that we start intuitively doing is starting to put down roots. And so today I want us to look 
at Revelation chapter 22 verses 14 to 17 to understand a little bit more about these roots I'm speaking about. Revelation chapter 22 verses 14 to 17 from the Passion Translation. This is what it says. Wonderfully blessed are those who wash their robes white so that they can access the tree of life and enter the city of bliss by its open gates. Those not permitted to enter are outside the malicious hypocrites, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, murderers, idolaters, and every lover of lies. I, Jesus, sent my angel to you to give you this testimony, to share with the congregations, I am the bright morning star, both David's spiritual root and his descendant. Come, says the Holy Spirit and the bride in divine duet. Let everyone who hears this duet join them in saying, come. Let everyone gripped with spiritual thirst say, come. And let everyone who craves the gift of living water come and drink it freely. Come. We've read this um, passage in other translations, I'm sure. But look at what it says specifically in verse 16. It says, I, Jesus, sent my angel to you to give you this testimony to share with the congregations. I am the bright morning star, both David's spiritual root and his descendant. Look at the word spiritual root. So when you look at this verse, before I explain what the spiritual root is, this verse is very poignant because it's explaining the deity and the humanity of Jesus, that he was way before David exist, ever existed. And so he, from him, David arose. And then there's also his humanity because it's from David's bloodline that Mary and Joseph come around and that's where Jesus is born into the earth. So there's this comparison of Jesus' deity and his humanity. But the word that caught my attention was spiritual root. I believe that each of us who have been born again because of our belief in Jesus, because of our faith in Jesus, we today have the spiritual roots of Jesus himself because he is the author and finisher of our lives, of our faith. And so more than emphasizing on our physical roots, you know, what my family did or accomplished or my culture or my traditions, I think we need to start looking at our spiritual roots and that is found only in Jesus. So what does this look like? What is the spiritual root all about? Let's look at Colossians chapter 2 to understand it a little bit more. Colossians chapter 2 verses 6 to 7 in the Passion Translation says this, In the same way you receive Jesus our Lord and Messiah by faith, continue your journey of faith, progressing further into your union with him. Your spiritual roots go deeply into his life as you are continually infused with strength, encouraged in every way. For you are established in the faith you have absorbed and enriched by your devotion to him. I have read this passage so many times in the NIV or in the ESV, but to read it in the Passion gave it an entirely different meaning. Basically, it's saying that if my spiritual roots are in Jesus, I'm continually infused with strength and encouraged in any way. Look at the description infused. It's like having an IV drip and you're just constantly infused with more of him. The second thing it says, you're established in the faith, absorbed and enriched by devotion to him. So this is what I want to leave with you today. If our spiritual roots are truly in Jesus, even if they're not yet in Jesus, this is what we need to look at. When my spiritual roots are are in Jesus. Not if, when my spiritual roots are in Jesus, the first thing is that I'm constantly nourished. This is not a one-off nourishment. This is a constant nourishment all day, every day. Because in Colossians 2.7, this is what it says, I am continually infused with strength and encouraged in any, every way. When you look at the anatomy of a root in a plant, the minute roots start coming out of a seed, they start to almost intuitively look for water sources. And so they keep spreading until they find a water source. And the minute they go near a water source by osmosis or diffusion or, or imbibition, it starts absorbing nutrients into its system. And we are so often like that. The minute we are put into a certain setting, you know, be it work, be it moving to a new city, have you noticed that we immediately put down roots? We make friends, we have a social circle, we start to connect with people. When we come into the body of Christ, we do the same thing. We start to put down roots. And that's what we need to do. We need to put down roots. We need to start establishing ourselves in Jesus first before we even, you know, talk about the church or the body of Christ. We start putting down our roots in Jesus. And when we do that, 
We are constantly, constantly nourished. And the the problem with this is, you know, you may ask me, but I don't feel constantly nourished. I feel like there are some times when I'm high and dry. And I believe the reason for that is because sometimes there are some things that we root on to other than Jesus, which actually deplete us. They actually work at cross purposes to what God has for us. And so I believe the condition to this, you know, the, the, the point is that we can be constantly nourished by Jesus himself. But the condition is that some things need to be uprooted. This is what Jesus says in Matthew 15 verse 13. He says, Jesus replied, every plant that my heavenly father didn't plant is destined to be uprooted. Jesus was speaking about the Pharisees and their uh, you know, unwillingness to believe them taking offense at everything he said. This is what he told his disciples. Everything that I have not planted, the heavenly father will uproot. Basically, what he's saying is that, hey, there are things in your lives, belief systems, your sense of religion, the way you do life. That's not of me. That's not of my father. It has to be removed. You need to remove it. You need to get rid of it. Today, I want to ask you, what are some of the things that you have been living with thinking that, you know, this is how my family is. This is how I was brought up. This is the culture of the place I was uh, brought up in where I was born. Or maybe this is the work culture of the place I'm at. What are some of the things that absolutely have to be uprooted because they're not in line with us? They're not in line with what God has for us. When I was sitting back this week, we had a bunch of different setbacks as a family. And we were, my husband and I were actually putting on a list of things that we found in our lives that were bad roots. They were bitter roots. They were roots that were not healthy. They were not going to do us good. And yes, we could trace some of these roots back to our grandparents' days because there were some things we had just accepted and said, you know, this is how my family does it. This is how we react to some things. This is how we speak. This is what we do. But then we had to come to this place of saying, but is this what God wants us to do? Is this what being saved and walking with Jesus every day, is he pleased with this kind of an attitude? Is he okay with this kind of a mindset? So I want to ask you, what are some of the things you have said, no, this is just how it is. This is the status quo. I'm not changing it because, well, this is my roots. This is where I come from. Maybe there are gender biases that have run deep in your life. Maybe there is, has been biases of all kinds because of which you show prejudice. Maybe there have, there's been alcoholism that you have started off saying it's just social drinking. It's not a big deal. My grandfather did it. My father did it. What about infidelity? Maybe you've thought, you know what? Monogamy is just not me. It's not me. I had to marry for society's sake, but this is not me. Maybe you've just accepted it because you've just, you move in circles where it's accepted. But as a follower of Christ, what is the Spirit telling you today? What is the Holy Spirit saying? Is He saying that that's okay for Him? What about an unjust way of borrowing and lending without any measure? You're unwilling to work hard. You just think, you know, I can live my life by borrowing and lending and just juggling things. What if you're unwise with the money and resources that God has given you? And that's just how you've seen things happen all these years. What if you've allowed stress to destroy your health, destroy your mind? What if you've accepted depression and discouragement as a part of your life? Because, hey, you know what? This is running in my family. I've seen it for too long. This is probably going to be my fate. Can I encourage you today? Because God is in the business of uprooting. You see a lot of the Old Testament writings by Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel, they talk a lot about the people of God needing to be uprooted from their land and taken away because of their disobedience. And I believe that in our lives, now that we are saved, now that we stand righteous before Jesus, now that we stand clothed in his righteousness, I believe that we no longer have to live like that. I believe that we can now stand before him and say, you know what, Lord, you are my roots. My roots run in you. I don't have to accept what my family has said. You know, this is what your life is. You're going to carry this genetically. This is going to be your, you know, fate. I don't believe so. What are those roots that need to be uprooted? Those things in your life that are displeasing to God. Those things in your life which you know he would frown upon. Those things need to be uprooted. So many times, you know, like a root that is looking for water, 
all of us have a hunger in us every human we hunger and thirst for certain things we hunger and thirst for validation for approval for love for companionship for relationship and so we tend to get anchored in the wrong things so if you're that person who's saying you know yes i've got an anchor in the wrong things my roots went looking for something and i found the wrong thing and i settled there but i need to get out it's not too late those things that need to be uprooted can be uprooted with the holy spirit's help you can't do it alone uh we have a, a very tiny lawn because that's all i'm capable of managing and in that there are you know as the lawn grows a bunch of weeds grow with it and it's interesting that it's not very easy to remove the weeds because the weeds roots go really deep and so the gardeners actually have a very interesting implement where they actually wind it around the entire plant's root go deep and then they pull it out right from the tip of the root which is embedded deep inside and so you and i on our own can't uproot these things it's not easy it's not possible even but with the master gardener's help our heavenly father is in the process of de weeding us he wants to clear everything that is not of him everything that we have thought is okay every business practice we thought you know what this is this is how business is done nowadays so i'm doing that but he's saying hey you're following me let's do it differently will you allow him to uproot those things it will be painful it will be painful you will be you will have jarring reminders of how human you really are but it's worth it remember that in order to be constantly nourished some things have to be uprooted and the beautiful thing about being constantly nourished you know the the beauty of this constant nourishment is that you're constantly encouraged you're in a state of hope you always have hope no matter how bad your situation is you know that something good is coming around you know that this is not the end of it you can constantly see light at the end of the tunnel because of the hope that is found in jesus you will find that being nourished by jesus means that you have this unexplainable peace unexplainable joy constant reservoir of love and it's this is not some mushy kind of love it's the it's the kind of love that is willful you choose to love again and again you decide to trust people and you love again that comes from jesus that comes when i'm constantly nourished constantly nourished by him when you're nourished by him you will find purpose outside of yourself during this one one and a half years of lockdown you know all of us have become so self obsessed you know the minute we have a small sniffle we freak out if we have a tickle in our throat we are like doing you know salt water gargling or we inhaling something what if we stop we uproot those things that are not of god and we say you know what lord there is a purpose for my existence something outside of myself show that to me that's what it looks like to be constantly nourished by jesus that's the first thing the second thing is that when my spiritual roots are in jesus i am immovable in my faith and now this seems like such a you know high expectation like of course my faith gets shaky of course there are things that make me wonder why am I, i'm even a christian i mean others have it easier why am i stuck in this but what sets us apart from others is that our faith however shaky it is has to keep growing to a place where it comes to an unshakable place a place where no matter what happens i know god is in control i know he is sovereign i know he has the best in store for me and i trust him with everything that's what it looks like verse 7 colossians 2 verse 7 says established in the faith absorbed and enriched by devotion to him this is a uh, common song uh, on christ the solid rock i stand all other ground is sinking sand when my roots are fixed on jesus nothing can move me so when i i was thinking about the sermon when i was walking outside this week and one of our neighbors has a beautiful garden and she has this money plant that grows along her wall it it was just a small pot and now it's grown into you know humongous proportions and what intrigued me more than the leaves were the root system the roots were so strong that they had actually gripped onto the wall and taken the money plant from the ground right to the terrace and as i stood there looking at the roots the roots were a jarring reality of what kept that plant upright they were thick they were gnarly 
but they were fixed so strongly to that wall they were staining the wall they were gripping it really tight and that plant has lasted every storm that we have seen on the side of town and it got me thinking you know that our roots are the only thing that keep us strong and firm when the storms of life hit us when they ravage us because let's face it none of us are beyond it all of us get those times when we're like lord why am i doing this what are the perks of following you lord it feels so hard but then i remembered that these roots keep me fixed on jesus everything else is sinking sand anything else i cling on to i can cling on to my career my career can be gone tomorrow i can cling on to my looks the looks go out tomorrow i can cling on to family family flies the nest nothing is permanent except jesus he is everything we need when i cling on to him it's it's permanent it's an unmovable faith i want us to read colossians chapter 2 verse 4 it says i want you to know this so that no one will come and lead you into error through their persuasive arguments and clever words the background to this was that there were people who were coming in with heresies dangerous heresies saying that you know what jesus is not the christ he's not the son of god you know he's just a good man there were all kinds of heresies flying around verse 8 says this beware that no one distracts you or intimidates you in their attempt to lead you away from Christ's fullness by pretending to be full of wisdom when they are filled with endless arguments of human logic for they operate with humanistic and clouded judgments based on the mindset of this world system and not the anointed truths of the anointed one i don't know if you know people who sound exactly like this but all of us have encountered people who have fine sounding arguments they tell you things in the best way possible they explain it to you scientifically 100% logically 100% but is it the anointed truth of the anointed one i wonder colossians chapter 2 verse 5 paul says this even though i'm separated from you geographically my spirit is present there with you and i'm overjoyed to see how disciplined and deeply committed you are because you have such a solid faith in Christ the anointed one conditions in order for us to be immovable in our faith we have to be disciplined and we have to be committed to him there's no two ways about it when i use the word disciplined on my children you know i need you to be more disciplined they hate it all of them grimace because discipline sounds like a horrible military kind of you know upbringing But what does discipline look like when we are followers of Jesus? It means we commit ourselves to prayer. We commit ourselves to reading the word of God. We commit ourselves to renewing our mind. Just this week I had this one thing that happened which happens often often times and this particular thing usually will trigger me trigger my mind in 10 different directions. And this week before I could get triggered I decided in my head, you know what? This thing is happening. I don't have an you know I don't get to escape it but I can choose how I'm going to react I am not going to let my mind go down those dark pathways I am going to stay fixed on the fact that something good will come out of it and it was hard the struggle was real because I really felt like sometimes going back and nursing that grudge and and thinking about the bad things but then after 2 days after 2 days of struggling with it I can safely say I beat that destructive mental pathway committing ourselves to renewing our mind committing ourselves to repenting when we make a mistake when we fall short stepping out again in faith going forward in love that's commitment that's discipline how many of us can honestly say we are committed and disciplined in our walk with Jesus because without that our faith will not be immovable without that we are not going to be able to establish ourselves when those winds of heresy and all kinds of fine sounding arguments come at us i love that verse because it says beware that no one distracts you or intimidates you in their attempt to lead you away from christ's fullness christ's fullness christ is enough for everything by pretending to be full of wisdom when they're filled with endless arguments of human logic for they operate with humanistic and clouded judgments based on the mindset of this world system in other translations it says human traditions and rituals each of us have those things that we talked about that we need to uproot 
but we also need to have our ears tuned to the Holy Spirit and to what His Word says for us. Because if not, how are we going to distinguish between the voices all around us and the voice of truth? How are we going to be able to detect humbug when we hear it? How are we going to be able to know something's iffy about this person's logic? This is not theology. This is not sound. How are we going to know it unless we know the Word of God? And that comes with discipline. You can start today. I think the time has come for all of us to move away from just reading a verse of the day, from just looking at that one WhatsApp forward and saying, that's my word for this week. Or maybe you're saying, you know, I need a prophetic word today to get me through today. And then you just open Facebook. You see some prophet writing something and you say, you know what, that's my word. I claim it. We need to move away from that. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to each one of us. He has a word for each one of us. But it comes with discipline. It comes with learning to train my ears to just his voice. It comes with learning to say, Lord, I'm putting aside everything else. Quiet times have to be done in the quiet of a room. It has to be done at home, not when you're seated at office with your you know, laptop in one direction and this one, because that's not really a quiet time. That's, it's bifurcated time. Quiet times, because that's when you hear him whisper truths from the word. That's when you hear him reveal things from the word. And that's when he teaches you what it's like to have an immovable faith. When we know the word of God, when we hear his voice, when we can actually discern his voice is when, when the storms actually hit us, we know exactly what to do. We know exactly how to battle that particular enemy. We know exactly how to wage war. We know exactly how to resist the enemy. It doesn't happen by accident. When you see the stalwarts of faith, it's so easy to say, you know, they probably, you know, they had a lot of help or, you know, they're old people. They know what to do. No, it comes from years of discipline. It comes from years of commitment, hardcore commitment to Jesus. What is our commitment at present? Is it a deep commitment to him? Is it one that is rooted deeply? Because like it says, we need to be established and grounded in him, we need to be disciplined and committed to him. Today, as we watch people all around us and even ourselves, we are, all of us are bivocational at church. And I notice that all of us are so committed to our work. We're disciplined about our exercise times. We're disciplined about our work. We're disciplined about our children's schedules. We're disciplined and, and committed to our career paths. We're committed to our houses or our, you know, the things that we pursue with passion. We're committed to our vacations. We're committed to our EMIs. We're committed to shopping. Guilty as charged. But how committed am I to Jesus? How disciplined am I in my pursuit of Jesus? Because if I am not committed, if I am not disciplined, my faith will be fickle. My faith will be like on clay soil. It will keep shifting. I want an immovable faith, a faith that rides me through the next 50 years of my life. That's the kind of faith I desire. And I hope that each of you who are watching will come to this place of saying, you know what, I want my roots in Jesus. Because when my roots are in Jesus, I'm constantly nourished, constantly nourished. And my faith is immovable. We so often tell people, you know, you need to have an un unshakable faith. But how do you do it? Do you give them the, the roadmap? The roadmap is one of discipline. It's one of commitment. We can't afford to take shortcuts with this anymore. The days of shortcuts are over. Days are getting harder. Life is getting more complex. If this is the time you're deciding to, you know, chill, take a back seat on getting to know Jesus, it's going to be a problem. The world is in a place of flux. The whole thing is shaking. Where are you and I rooted? Because if we are rooted in the wrong things, our faith will fall. When trying times come, we won't have roots in the right place. We live beside a lake, like I've said, and usually beside any lake, when trees are planted, it's done with the primary intention of preventing soil erosion, which means, you know, as the waters hit the banks, the soil erodes and, and kind of runs off with the water. And what happens is uh, a lot of land is wasted. A lot of nutrients are lost. So what they do is they plant trees at the river's edge or the lake's edge in order to hold the soil particles tight. And I believe that for each of us, Life sometimes feels like it's being eroded. You know, the things that are happening to each of us feels like our lives are just having erosion constantly. But if your roots are in Jesus, 
trust me, if your roots are in Jesus, the erosion stops. You start to see joy. You start to see purpose even in your pain. You start to experience unexplained peace in the midst of crisis. That's what a tree planted by a river looks like because its roots have gone deep. It's holding the soil together. It's supporting other trees as well. Isn't that what each of us in the body of Christ must do? As my roots go deep, as your roots go deep, we encourage each other, we grow together, we bear fruit together. That's what it looks like. All of us need roots. Today, you and I as followers of Jesus, we have the spiritual roots that go deep into Jesus. Will you uproot everything that's not of him? Stop saying that, you know, this is how I do things. This is how I've done things for the past 50 years. I can't change it. This is my mindset, you know, this is how I've grown up. Or this is what my parents have taught me. This is our family's traditions. If it's not in line with God's will for your life, ask God, help me uproot it. Remove it from my life. Give him access. Give him access today that he will uproot everything that is not of him. And the roots that then go down are constantly nourished by Jesus himself. Will you uproot it? Will you spend time with him? Will you stop giving excuses about not spending time and saying, you know what, I have this business to run. Oh, I don't have time. I only have time for, you know, one verse. Come on, you're not a babe in Christ anymore. You're growing up. So give him more time. Spend time in worship. Spend time in prayer. Speak to him like you would a friend and see what he reveals to you. He's going to reveal mysteries to you. I want to pray for you today that you will experience this kind of rootedness and that even if your roots have gone to the wrong places, even if you found yourself anchored to the wrong people, the wrong places, the wrong kind of culture, the wrong kind of habits, I want to ask you today that you will open your hearts up, that the master gardener will have space in your life to come in and remove those weeds from the root up. He's not going to just trim it on the top. He's going to pull it out right from below and it's going to hurt a bit, but it's going to be worth it. For those of you who have gone and latched on to something or you're starting to migrate towards something that is not of God, I pray that God will show you, hey, you know what? That's not where your roots have to go. Come back to me. For those of you who have been committed to anything other than Jesus, your discipline has been turned towards something else. Can you bring it back to the Lord today? Father, I just pray that as each person watches this right now, that you will convict them of roots that have gone down the wrong places, roots that have fixed on to things that were not of you, things that were not of your will for their lives. I pray in Jesus' name, that every root that was not planted by you will be removed in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Father, for diseases that have been spoken over people saying, this is what our family has suffered with. In Jesus' name, we pray release. We pray a breakage of those bonds in Jesus' name. And we speak life and health and wellness. Lord, I speak for those, Lord, who have been caught up in business practices that are not of you. That's not how you want them to work, Lord. Those who have been on career paths of their own making, saying this is them and their calling, but Lord, I pray you will refine them right now, that you will convict them and that Lord, you will do your good work in them. Father, I pray for those who have hardly given you time, O oh Father. I pray that from today, they will give time to you. They will have quiet times in your presence and that Lord, I know you want to speak beautiful things into their ears. You want to whisper the mysteries of heaven and earth. And I pray that you will do that. I pray that your people will seek you with all their heart, with a discipline and a commitment that knows no bounds. And we thank you, Lord, that we're going to be soaked in you. Living waters wash over us right now. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Remember that your roots are now in Jesus. No longer in the things of the world, no longer in traditions and rituals, no longer in the things your family has, has placed on you. It now runs deep in Jesus. God bless you. Have an amazing week. Thanks for listening to this message. We hope you were blessed. To hear more messages like this, make sure to subscribe and check out our podcast channel for past episodes. 
If you like what you are hearing, consider rating us, subscribing, and even sharing it with friends. That would really help us. For more content from We Are Zion and to connect with us, go to wearezion.in. Remember, whoever finds Jesus finds life.